Thanks. Yeah. We gotta go. Pinochet has taken over. There's been a military coup. They're arresting Allende supporters. They confiscated my posters at the university. They'll be here soon. We have to go. Where are we gonna go? I don't know. Just out. <laughs> Welcome to Kermit Uncut. There was a story in the press last week, you may well have seen, about the success or lack of it of the new film starring Emma Watson. The story was reported in many papers. In The Guardian, for example, it appeared under a headline which said, Emma Watson's new film makes £47 at the UK box office. The story went on to say her first lead role post Harry Potter has seen the star's new film, a thriller set in Pinochet era Chile, take only £47 at the UK box office in its opening weekend. The Colony stars Watson as a woman attempting to infiltrate a cult in order to rescue her husband, played by Daniel Brühl. Now, the interesting thing about this story is that when you read that, wow, a film took £47, you immediately think that is absolutely terrible. However, the story then goes on to point out that in fact, the theatrical release was basically a platform to promote the video on demand release. More and more people are now watching films at home, streaming them on their computers. And this is a completely legitimate way of distributing films. I mean, we've talked about it here on the blog, but obviously it means that the box office can change. Now, as a critic, I, like everybody else, have done that thing about taking pleasure in some films taking rubbish amounts of money at the box office. I mean, I think I pointed out that Pimp, the Danny Dyer film, took £205 in its opening weekend, and I was barely able to restrain my delight when Run For Your Wife took just over £600. The point is, however, that those figures don't actually mean as much as we'd like to pretend they do, because in an age in which cinema is no longer the primary way of seeing films, the amount that a film takes at the box office is not necessarily an indicator of whether a film has done well or done badly. Now, in the case of The Colony, I have severe reservations about the film. I think it's well-intentioned. I think it tells a story that hasn't been told in a popular format before, or at least if it has, I didn't know about it. But the film itself is kind of messy. It's a melodrama. It doesn't quite hang together. And most of the reviews for it were middling to poor. But not, it has to be said, terrible. See, the thing about theatrical platforming is that there's a simple reason for doing it. Yes, you will probably lose money, but your film will get reviewed. I mean, the fact that I can tell you that most of the reviews for the film were middling to poor means that it was reviewed, because it was nominally at least a theatrical release. You know, more and more we're going to see cases of small movies given platform releases to attract reviews, taking almost no money in cinemas, but essentially standing or falling on the strength of their home viewing figures. And if that seems a weird thing, the only thing that will change it is when review patterns start to change. When reviewers don't actually see any difference between films that are released in cinemas or for home viewing. Until that changes, these kind of stories are just going to increase. Oh, you think you made a mistake? That you shouldn't have come here? 